Hello, my friends. Thank you for being with me today as I make a simple but useful journal using watercolor paper. I love using watercolors, so I always have this kind of journal on the go. My name is Laura, and I am from the Queen of Mirth. I'm also endlessly grateful to be here with you today. So let's get started. Um, these ones I did in advance, so I'll put them aside. And um, let me tell you what I'm doing. I'm making a very simple watercolor book or journal. And um, it will have a, a cover. The, the first thing I want to do, however, is make the decal edge. These are the ones that I already did. I did them last night because um, you don't need to see me copying myself over and over. But um, I, I'm making a decal edge around all sides of the pages because I, um, I think it's beautiful. And also I want the pages to be a little bit smaller than the cover so that so the pages stay inside the cover and they're not peeking out. Um, I, I also I really do like the looks of this though. I think it's nice. Yeah. And I love watercolors. Now I should also I'll tell you in a minute, I'll show you in a minute the the paper that I'm using is the is from the children's department in at Michaels, and it's called watercolor paper by Creatology. And um, see, this is much easier to rip if it's wet. That's the secret to this. It makes it much more simple. Suddenly the paper likes to be ripped and it seems to be straighter as well. Okay, now I'll show you, let me just show you the paper pad that I have this from. It's, it's this one, um, watercolor. Um, and this is just the French because I'm in Canada and in Canada we have two official languages, French and English, so everything has to be labeled in both languages. But it's basically the watercolor, 40 sheets, 9 inches by 12 inches, paper pad by Creatology. And it was about $6 Canadian money at Michael's and that translates to much less in American dollars. I think that the six dollars Canadian is probably about four or five, four dollars American. I'm not sure, but I know it's less because the U.S. dollar is stronger than the Canadian dollar. There. Now, going this way on on these ends, these sides. It's harder. Um, to, it's harder to rip than the, than the long way. I'm not sure the reason for that, but all paper is that way. It has a, an easy to rip side and a difficult to rip side. It's kind of a warp and weft thing. I don't know. And I, I want to get this end here too. Okay. hope you can see the whole thing. I have a kind of a small area, um, where, you know, where, where you can actually view everything that I'm doing. And sometimes I forget and I, I bring it off camera and I'm working away, I'm trying not to do that so much anymore. But I'm still very new to making videos. Um, I'm, I started maybe six months ago. And it's been a real learning curve for me because I had never in my entire life made a video before. And I didn't know how to edit. I didn't know how to do a lot of things. I found it a little intimidating actually, but I'm getting, I'm getting there. And they do improve over time, hopefully. So I hope that 
that's not famous last words. So, anyway, I love what I'm doing regardless. And not everything works out perfectly, but that's life, isn't it? I doubt that anything in life or very little in life works out absolutely perfectly. And one thing about art, though, is that even when it's not working out perfectly or the way we really want it to, we can adapt. We can change what we've done or, you know, shift gears. The important thing is not to get stressed. And then art becomes a very therapeutic activity. I have found it to be so in my life, for sure. Um, when I go through hard times, and I have, making art is one of the things that really saves me. So, and I hope the same for all of you. You know, you just don't put yourself under a lot of pressure. Okay, this is the this is this is the page. Now I have four of these because my book is going to have sixteen pages, and I need my bone folder. My goodness. Here, this is a nice bone folder I got for Christmas. My daughter and her family gave me some bookmaking supplies for Christmas. And it couldn't have been a better gift. They know what I love. So now you don't need a bone folder for this job. You can use the big big handle part of your scissors, or you can use what I often use is a very nice shiny stone. Smooth, smooth, not shiny, not necessarily shiny, smooth stone works so nicely. So, but, you know, use what you have. That's what you got to do. So here we are. These just nestle into one another, of course. I'm going to show you how easy and fast it is to make a book like this. You know, I think that it, it's very simple and it is uh, actually it comes out very, very nice with the especially with the torn edges. Here we have our 16 inner pages of the book. Four sheets. So it's, it's like um, four times four. Now, where did I put my... Here, Here is the cover. Now I want to make it... Um, just turned over like this. See, these are, like I said, their pages are 9 inches by 12 inches. So the cover's dimensions um, are half that, which is 6 inches by 4.5, I believe. And you want a really beautiful, crispy, crispy um, crease. Now, let's go in here, like so. Lovely. Now I'm going to bind it, which is a simple, simple matter. Just want to make sure that. Okay, so for binding it, now I like to clamp down my pages. I know that some people don't. They just basically stitch it up and ho just by holding it. But I don't trust myself to do that. 
I'm afraid that I'll let it shift. And so just for my own peace of mind and to make sure that the holes don't shift around after I make them, um, I like to put a, a, a few clips on. Okay, now I get my awl. Um, if you don't have an awl, use a tapestry needle, which is what I used for quite a long time before I got awls. Now, I look, I look at it and I get roughly, roughly halfway. You could measure if you like. I'm not a huge measuring girl. It's not my thing. I do measure when I absolutely need to, of course, and that happens. But today I don't need to, because I, all I need to do is um, I don't like this. Th I don't like this one to be right in the middle. I prefer it to be a little bit more down to the down to the um, bottom. See, that's good. It's coming right in the seam straight in the spine where I want it. And then this one, I make about the same as the one at the bottom. And you see, I wouldn't be able to hold it like this if I didn't have it clamped. For me, it just gives me more freedom of moving it around and everything. Okay, there, I have my three holes because I'm making a three hole pamphlet stitch, which is an ancient stitch. It's elegant, beautiful. It's been around for centuries, millennia probably. And um, the reason it's lasted is because it works very, very well. It's a strong way of binding a book. And, um, and it's simple. It's easy. Almost anybody can do it. Now, okay. I'm going to make this thread. This, by the way, is linen thread. And you don't need to use linen thread. You can use, um, you can use dental floss, if you like. Um, okay. So I make it approximately three three times the length of my spine plus about halfway. Now it's certainly this isn't being measured well or anything, but that's fine. Don't need to. Sorry for that rummaging, but I had to find my scissors. Goodness, you didn't it didn't there. Okay. You. Oh, I cut my thread. I made a mistake. That's okay. I'm gonna. I'm, I have to re remeasure my thread. I'll let my mistake stay in the video because everybody makes mistakes, including me, and it's good to see that it's not a big deal. Nothing to get upset about. So one, two, three, and about halfway. Okay. There. And this is my needle. Good thing it has a large eye because my vision is terrible these days. I'm actually waiting to have my cataract operation. So, which should be in three or four months, I hear, but I'm not 100% sure. So, but I'm not worried about it. I just need to, I need to wait for that. Anyway, here, this goes through the first hole. Now I want to make 
make sure that I leave enough tail to make a knot at the end of the day. Not at the end of the day, really, but at the end of the, of the binding threading. Um, okay, so here, and now I'm going to, now it comes out here so I can go either way to the top or the bottom. Today I'm going to go to the top, and I'm going to just put the needle through the holes, like so, and now I don't want it to be double, so I have to pull the needle up a little Now the next thing to do is to make sure it's reasonably tight and secure but don't pull it too much because you don't want to rip your paper. So here we go with this one. It comes so it came to the top and and now it's coming through. Now I I have a uh, see I have a thread here but not one here. So this one is actually going to go to the middle. Um, and then I'm going to bring it through again. But this time I have to make sure, there's one little rule here. I have to make sure that it goes on the opposite side of the, the, th the, the, the thread coming through is on the opposite side from this one. So this one is on my right and I want the next thread to go on the left. So, and I have done that. So, because I'm going to make a knot and the knot has to secure the thread that is going all the way down. And the only way we're going to do that is by um, making it, making the thread come and go on, on both sides. So now I clip my thread and I put my needle back in its, on its cardboard so that it doesn't um, get lost. And at the same time, I should really put the awl back in its home because it's so very sharp and dangerous that it has to be taken good care of. And don't ever let children touch it. They'll stab themselves or something terrible. It could be horrific. So now I do, okay, this is um, left over right and under. And then right over left and under. And that's it. Now I could leave it at this, but I think I, I like the look of a, I, you know, I could trim the, trim, trim the edges and just leave it like that, trim the ends. Or I'm going to make a bow because I think it gives it a nice little finished look. There, done. So this is the book. It's finished and making it was enjoyable and simple. And I think it's nice. It has a, a nice white linen thread. And this is, the, this is the center of it. And it has a nice deco edges. And there. It's made of um, children's watercolor paper, so it's not the best paper on earth, but for my purposes, it's just fine. And I'll be able to mess around quite a bit with this, doing some mixed media work on the pages. So thank you so very much for being with me today. I so much appreciate it. And I invite you to subscribe to my channel to press the like button if you like the video and to make any comments that you wish. I look at all my comments, so if you have any suggestions for me or any questions, that's the place to put them in the um, 
description box below. Take care now and do come back and see me soon. Bye.